What's up, everybody? It's me, Danny. Um, first and foremost, I deeply apologize for not having a video uploaded on Monday. Um, um, where I'm at, it rained pretty bad, and my power went out, and I had to go to work, and it was just, it was a lot of commotion going on that day. So, I, like I said, I apologize for not having a video on Monday. But today, we're going to be taking a look at OCG Deckless once again. Um, this is thanks to the Facebook page, Ready for a Duel. Uh, like it says right here, OCG Deckless uh, for the 10th to 13th of August. And it's, it's, it's pretty all right. There's a lot of interesting deck lists that uh, we're going to be taking a look at. Some of them you've seen already. Some of them are making a comeback, things of that nature. So the first list that we see is Pendulum Magicians. Now, what we notice here is this deck is running the Spellbook engine. Now, I've been discussing with some of my friends on whether or not we should, because I run Pendulum Magician as well, uh, if we should be running the Spellbook engine or not. And I kind of feel as though we shouldn't, only for the simple fact that Ghost Ash is, well not Ghost Ash, Ash Blossom is becoming a main deck staple more than Ghost Ogre due to the death of Zoo and Draco, well sort of Draco, but due to the death of Zoo, Ghost Ogre is just not that good anymore. Um, post ban list, everything searches, nothing really is on the field that searches, it's just a one time activation where Ash Blossom is infinitely better. So that was like one of my arguments to, to the reason why um, I'm kind of on the fence on running the spellbook engine but OCG seems to be doing it just fine even with triple ghost ash um, we also see triple maxi in the main deck we see triple of the trap pendulum graph we see spellbook of fate even in the main deck as well as the search card uh, spellbook of secrets I believe it's called um, we see the return of apex avian uh, on the pendulum magician Facebook group there have been people talking about putting apex avian back in the main deck I haven't put mines in the main deck yet because not only because of uh, the chance of it breaking, it's just because I don't feel like Apex is that good. Um, not anymore, but just right now it's not that good because just a one-time negation is not like the best of things. Also, when it comes to terms of it having to return from the hand, you know, someone could just chain the Ghost Ogre and kill the Apex. So it's things like that is why I'm not running the, the big fat chicken, <laughs> uh, if that's what you want to call it. But... I mean, OCG seems to be doing great with this deck. Uh, they also have, obviously, <laughs> number 41, Baguska, uh, in the extra deck. Then you also see they have the new, uh, I think it's like, Bullet Dragon. Um, it's very interesting. Its link markers are up, left, down. So it's actually pretty neat. Then you see uh, the one Magician card. I have to learn how to pronounce that card because I like that card a lot for me to not know its name um, we also see interestingly enough enlightenment paladin in the extra deck now I haven't read enlightenment paladin in a while I think I should have it like somewhere around here um if I can't find it then oh well nope can't find it but I'm actually curious as to why enlightenment paladin is making a return uh, to the extra deck I understand it can add back one spell card from your grave, but I'm curious as, as to what they're adding back, you know? I wonder if they're just adding like the spell book of knowledge or they're adding the cosmic cyclone, maybe the pen call. So it's kind of neat. I, I can I can get behind running that. They also run double time star magician, which is very, very good in my opinion. Um, I'm not running double time star right now because I still have zoo in my deck, but if zoo does get slaughtered, double time star would definitely be an addition to my deck. Now moving on to the side deck, we see double Lancia, double Skullmeister, double Valor. Now, Valor being in the side deck or main deck, I think some of these decks have been learned in the main deck, I'm not too sure. But Valor making a return, that's very interesting to me. Because Valor was always one of those cards where it was never bad, but there was just never a time where it was good, you know. I tried to tell my friends that using Valor on Zoo when they go for the Chalk 9 play to, re to Monster Reborn a guy was always the best place to use the Valor. Um, you know, other than that, Valor's just not really that good, you know, like, you I guess you could Valor, like, the Draco cards, but they can probably just chain to get an effect anyway, so you kind of just neg the card while they're just plussing. Um, Valor would most definitely hurt cards like Gofu, it could definitely hurt Skullcore Bad Joker if you don't have the Ash, uh, it could definitely hurt, you know, like, the Wind Witch combos and things like that, so... I can understand why Baylor is like making a return in some aspect. Then we see, of course, Heavy Storm, um, Heavy Storm Duster, Harpy's Feather Duster, because that's the one we don't have. The same way they don't have Regeki. Um, then you see Double System Down, the third Cosmic Cyclone, because two are in the main deck. We see Double Wavering Eyes. 
yes yes i'm so happy ocg has wavering eyes back because it's showing that it's not doing a damn thing you know if we i'm pretty sure the tcg got wavering eyes at one it wouldn't be that bad if we got it at two maybe we get things get a little bit silly but we can't have it at three no more it's just obscene at three pendulums players who gave up on the deck would definitely make a return due to the fact that wavering eyes is back um, it's like the same logic with Stratos coming back. There will definitely be a resurgence of hero players, but it definitely probably won't affect the meta. But yeah, double wavering eyes and triple threatening roar. That's actually very interesting. Um, I never would have considered running threatening roar as a side deck card. Maybe don't knock it till you try it. I'm not too sure. I personally wouldn't run it because if I'm using threatening roar, then if I, well, I would probably use threatening roar against like a Draco deck. But if they make the masterpiece un immune to trap cards, then kind of sucks. But I guess they used it against like maybe the mirror match for pendulums or ABC because you know Buster can spam itself easily and just start punching your face in for light points. So threading more, it's pretty all right. All right, we're gonna move on to the next deck list, and uh, we see here when which Draco once again making a resurgence now what's interesting enough they have triple maxi triple cherries and triple skullmeister all in the side deck <laughs> but oddly enough they're main decking one cosmic cyclone versus maining two or three now i can kind of understand it for the simple fact that they have harpy's feather duster in the main deck but i would probably still main deck cosmic cyclones for the simple fact that the mirror match is a thing the mirror match is very annoying that you can get your f effects from me destroying your stuff, but you don't get anything if I banish your stuff, so I will probably go with that. Now, for the main deck, we see, of course, one Masterpiece, three Dynamite, but only one Ignis and one Majesty. That's not too bad, actually. I see multiple lists running two Ignis, so maybe cutting back on the one Ignis is better. Who knows? We also see triple Glass Bell and triple Ice Bell. Now, I know some lists run maybe one to two Glass Bells, I've never seen three glass spells, so that's very interesting. Then, of course, we see the triple ghost ash and the spellbook engine and the one snowbell. For the spells standard lineup, we see three heritage, two Draco Phoenix, the one diagram, and one terraforming. Probably would earn two um, just to be able to see diagram as often as physically possible. Then we see, of course, the standard traps of what the heck is this? Then, of course, you see the standard traps of the double waterfall, triple return, triple apocalypse. For the extra deck, you see the cherries target, ABC Buster, the cherries target, Danglong. Well, the deck could actually make Danglong, but pretty sure that's not optimal as anything. But we see Leo, double crystal wing, double clear wing, one clear wing fast dragon or something. Fast wing, something like that. I don't know. Uh, double of the crystal bell. Yeah, at least called crystal bell. Black Rose Dragon, Double Star Charge Warrior, Double Ding Long, 1M7. Now, you're definitely seeing a pattern in the side deck of the struggling battle card being a side deck and not a main deck card. Now, when this card was first announced, I thought it would be just an automatic main deck staple because you can just simply start your turn, uh, end main phase, go to battle phase, end battle phase, activate, and then main phase 2, you establish your own board. But, I guess as a side deck card for going second is the best bet um because i definitely don't see this card doing anything if you're going first um then like i said you see double kaijus or skull Binders. i'm so happy we're getting this as a super reprint i remember when I, when it was first announced we're getting it as a reprint i was like why are we getting this card and then now i'm seeing it and i'm understanding the uh interactions it has with other decks i'm like that's a good that's a good thing you did konami uh next deck list we see Kaiju Invoked. Now, this is a deck that I haven't been talking about enough of because I haven't been seeing it pop up when I talk about the OCG. But this deck is actually pretty darn good. The fact that you can just tribute your opponent's monster for the Kaiju, then use potentially that monster for Alistair and Invocation, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You don't see many Kaijus, though. It's only up to, like, I think four to six Kaijus. This deck is using four Kaijus. And then we see a bunch of hand traps, you know, we see Ash Blossom, we see Ghost Ogre, we see Cypher and Gamma to negate the Ash Blossom. So then we also see Gofu just to make, uh, well, in this case, not Deco Talker, but probably just for like Link Spider or the uh, 
Gaia Saber, things of that nature. I have no idea why they're playing the Stargirl Link monster, Ningirisu, probably for the untargetable, well, I mean, non targeting removal that it has. Then I don't, I also don't understand why they're playing three invocation. That seems kind of bricky to me. Three scapegoat seems legit. Double terraforming, triple meltdown, one kill to waterfront. It's pretty good. Triple Cosmic Cyclone, one desires. Probably would run two desires. I was never on the, I was never the guy to run just the one desires. I need to run one or two. I mean, not one or two, yeah, two or three. Um, then we look at the main, I mean, the extra deck. You see double Mechaba, one of the Earth Guy, double Purgatrio. One Cositis and <laughs> Link Monsters. Now, was interesting enough, this deck also has side deck Threatening Roar. Could this be the new wave of the side deck of using Threatening Roar? I'm not too sure. I would, I would definitely have to uh, try it out because I feel like if you can just live long enough, then you, you, eh, you'll be able to kill your opponent. Since uh, they don't have a battle phase anymore. Also, we see Triple Max C in the side deck. Double Dark Hole, one Kaiju Slumber, double Twin Twister, double Unending Nightmare. I would think they would have been using a uh, Heavy Storm Duster, but I guess with so many invocation targets, it doesn't hurt to discard uh, for Twin Twisters. And then we also see double Anti uh, for ABC and in Invoke Mirror Matches. Now, for this deck, oh boy, we just see Basic Invoked. Um. I'm pretty certain there's supposed to be a 15th card extra deck monster. I would assume that maybe, 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 maybe on some off chance that it's another uh, invoked fusion, maybe. Like I said, maybe. <laughs> but to the main deck, we have double game seal, one go full, triple Alistair, triple ghost ash, two. I keep calling it ghost ash. I just like the OCG name better. Give me a break, man. Um, double Blue Boy, Triple Maxi, No Ogres. They're both in the side deck. And the OCG just, it just plays normal. Like, <laughs> Link's really didn't change anything. Not yet. Hopefully not never. But, you know, all these deck lists just basically look pretty much the same. And nothing's really been switching up. But now we get to this. What is this? Um, I'm just not a fan of Trickster, sorry. <laughs> but it looks like they're playing some sort of Chaos Trickster variant. Now, I'm trying to find my copy of, what, is it, what, what the hell is that card called? Um, the Eater of Millions. Well, I couldn't find it. So we're just gonna keep talking about uh, the list that we see here. So we see double BLS. <laughs> Konami, please give us another BLS, please. I would definitely play BLS in my Magician deck because I have plenty of lights and darks. But we see double BLS, we see one Gofu, we see triple Candina, triple Honest, triple uh, Canadia or Licorice. I'm not sure. Um, the one that bounces back to Special Summon, triple Ash Blossom. See, I got it right this time. Triple cherries in the main deck because the deck doesn't really need an extra deck. Look at it. You see Mechaba, Buster, Crystal, Denglong. The Utopia package is probably the only thing that this deck is going into. And then you just see a bunch of commonly found Link monsters in every other deck's extra deck. And then we see, once again, Triple Scapegoat. We see Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning, and then for the side deck, we see Triple Macrocosmos, we see Double Zombie World for the Draco matchup. We see Triple Ghost Ogre, Triple Skull Meister, one Kaiju Slumber, and three Kaijus. Like I said, this deck doesn't need an extra deck at all. If the if the Utopia, yeah, if the Utopia package is played in a lot of other decks, then they can use that to their advantage as well. But that's probably the only thing that they're going into. Now, I believe the next deck is the last deck. Yes, this is the last deck for today. It's ABC. Now, this looks so much better than that abomination we saw last time. If it wasn't on this channel, then it was on my personal channel. But the other ABC list that I went over when I was talking about the OCG metagame was terrifically obscene. Because it was just so beautiful how bad it was. Now, we see Triple Maxi, Triple Lancia, Double A, Double C, Triple B, Triple Ghost Ash, Double Destruto. Like I said, Ash Blossom, if you don't have it now, please try to find it. 
on TCG player they're going up they're like 50s right now I don't know how much they are on YGO singles or uh, Yu-Gi-Oh car market where you should be getting your cards from anyway but if you don't have Ash Blossoms please get them please that card is amazing then we see of course standard spells but we see MST and Book of Moon that's actually crazy I would think that this deck would be running Cosmic Cyclone but then you see Chicken Game and the Solemn Brigade, so it's basically, oh, and not to mention, Destruo pays half the life points, so, yeah, <laughs> I just wasn't looking hard enough. Uh, we see Book of Moon, not too bad. Uh, we see Triple Set Rotation, Zombie World, Gateway to Chaos, Double Chicken Game, Double Union Hanger, Double Dragon Ravine. It's a lot of field spells. <laughs> then we see Solemn, 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 Solemn. Now for the extra deck. Looks pretty simple. We see the Ancient Fairy, Decode, Buster, Wombo Combo. We don't see. Uh, oh, I forgot. Tornado Dragon is a TCG exclusive for right now. They are getting Tornado Dragon soon, though. Um, I'm not sure if they'll replace Diamond Dire for Tornado Dragon like we did, but it's a possibility. Um, interestingly enough, we see Rhapsody and Berserk. Now, I actually like the fact that they're using that card because Rhapsody and Berserk is actually pretty, pretty versatile. Um, what Rhapsody and Berserk does for you, those of you who don't know, uh, up to twice per turn, you can detach a material from this card and target card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. I believe it's card or monster, I'm not sure. Um, then you can activate the effect to equip itself to an XZ's monster you control and it gains 1200 attack. So that's pretty neat to get a double banish off and you get your ABC parts in the graveyard faster. And then to get rid of it from the extra monster zone, you can just equip it to what XZ's monster you control. So, ah. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, then once again in the side deck, interestingly enough, this guy is great. He's siding one uh, of the Zephyr Shadal thing because in case he gets hit with that young set rotation and he knows his opponent, this person knows that their opponent is playing set rotation, they're going to give him the Oracle of Zephyr. He can just activate, search the guy. And it's not, I don't really know what that card does other than just being a free search target. But yeah, it's pretty neat that he's using that. Um, I remember before hearing that people who are getting like Gateway of Chaos, that, that's the that's the term now. You're getting Gateway of Chaos, have been uh, putting in a copy of BLS the Ritual so that you can add it to the hand, or maybe the Gaia because you can normal summon it. But yeah, if it, if it applies to the same logic of this, then kudos to those people. Um, then we see Triple Twin Twister. We see one Cosmic Cyclone. We see Vanities. Oh, that card is so ignorant. Then we see goes in match, it's pretty good. Uh, triple game of seal, one come on this double cherries, and let's wrap it up. The one skull meister. So what you probably have been noticing is that oh my bad, we have one more list. How could I forget? We have heroes. Now this hero list looks pretty legit. Uh, we see double honesty neils, double straddles, one goblinberg, one blaze man, one shadow mist. Double Vion, one Bubble Man, Triple Ash Blossom, Triple Ghost Ogre, Double Maxi, Triple Valor. All the hand traps. Let's just do it. All the hand traps. No more back row. Just hand traps. Uh, then we see, of course, Triple E Call, Triple Hero Lives, one Rota, Double Desires, one Monster Reborn, Triple Cyclone, Triple Mass Change, and Double. I mean, yeah, and one Mass Change too. I guess Dark Law was a very, very ignorant problem. In OCG, they had to actually hit the card that can make Dark Lord other decks. So, good good on y'all, OCG. Because we all hate Dark Lord. Uh, we want Straddles back. Uh, triple back to the front. One Solemn Judgment. One Solemn Warning. For the extra deck, we have one Anki. One Divine Wind. One Acid. Double Dark Lord. One Blast. Then we see Black Rose. That's, that's not bad. Uh... Actually, it's not because you could just normal Goblin Berg, summon a tuna from hand, boom. And you can just activate Hero Lives. See? See? OCG, know, OCG knows what they're doing. Uh, then we have Utopia Package plus the Prime. We have Baguska. We have Castell, Gaga, Samurai, Exotana, and Dweller. Now, for the side deck, it's interesting because this person is using Chaos Hunter. Now, Chaos Hunter definitely is pretty okay. For the simple fact that it gives you an extra body and it also adds the Imperial Iron Wall effect. Um, so I guess you, if you don't have the Dark Law out, you could just 
have this so that way your opponent just can't banish anything. Then we have one Skullmeister, the third Maxi, uh, Harvey's Filler Duster, one Dark Hole, hmm, probably will be using two, triple MST, double Chalice, one Ignorant Emptiness, and double Strike. Now this should definitely be the last list. All right, cool. So if you're noticing, you see in this build, we have main Maxi, then we have side Maxi, then we have side Maxi, then we have main Maxi, then we have no Maxi, then we have main Maxi, and we have main Maxi. Get rid of Maxi Konami. For us, just get rid of it. OCG is putting up with three because I guess their logic is, well, if he has it, I'm not surprised. He should be running three copies of it. But for us, it's like, oh, reveal uh, Ice Bell, Maxi. Now I can't do my plays. And if I do commit to my plays, you get commission off of this one luck sack card. Please, Konami, get rid of Maxi for us. Um, uh, but if you're not going to get rid of it, just put it to three and we'll just put up with it just like OCG is doing. But this car, that card is just so ignorant. That card is just so, so, so skillful. It makes me and the community that I'm a part of and you watching at home good at Yu-Gi-Oh. That's what Maxi is. It's a good at Yu-Gi-Oh card. But that'll be the video for today. Um, it wasn't a Maxi rant at the end. It was just... A wishful thinking for the ban list but as you can see we see ABC we see invoked we see Draco we see tricksters and we see uh, heroes but like I said that'll be the video for today guys be sure to like comment subscribe and since oh my god take a shot go back in the video and take a shot every time that blue crap popped up while I've been trying to talk um, let me know if you're drunk or not and this is Danny signing out, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.